you probably get asked more than any other question is, what lens should I buy? But someone asked a question the other day that, that really caught my attention and they said, if you could only buy one lens, which lens would it be? So I thought about it, I have my answer. This Quick Tip Tuesday, as always, is brought to you by Epidemic Sound. The absolute best option for finding music for your YouTube channel. And oh, by the way, there's a free trial in the first link in the description. Go in there, download a bunch of music, try it out in your videos, post it online, totally free. Okay, today we are talking about lenses. And again, the question was, if I could only have one lens, which lens would it be? And while I do kind of have a roadmap for lenses of which one you should buy when for what kind of photography you're doing, let me know by the way, if you guys want to see that in a whole video of its own, I'll, I'll kind of lay out a roadmap for the different types of photography or videography that you're doing. But today we're talking about if you could only have one lens and, and the lens that I would choose isn't one of the game changer lenses. See, there's certain lenses that are just game changers. When you first get into photography and you have your little kit lens and then someone says, hey, Hey, have you ever checked out a Nifty 50? Then you go buy that lens and you start shooting with it and you go, oh my gosh, I'm an amazing photographer. Total game changer. Then maybe you pick up the 85 millimeter, game changer, 135, 70 to 200, 16 to 35, all game changer lenses. Because each of those lenses is bringing something new and amazing to your photography, to your ability to create images. But while all those lenses are game changers, there's one lens that while working, I, I couldn't do without. It is the jack of all trades lens, the master of none, but the workhorse that doesn't get the credit it deserves because you always get the shot with this lens. The 24 to 70 2.8. And I can already hear a ton of you groaning and saying, no, this other lens is better or that other lens is better, but you're wrong. This is the best single lens to own. Someone came to me one day and said, you're only allowed to have one lens forever. I would, I would very sadly say goodbye to all my other glass, strap on the 24 to 70 and know that I'm probably gonna get the shot. Because again, while not the greatest at any one thing as an all around lens, this is quite possibly the best lens there is. And I don't just mean the, the Sony version, I also mean the Canon 24 to 70 f2.8, the Nikon 24 to 70 f2.8. This lens set up on whatever camera you're using, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so let's talk about why I think it's so amazing. First up is the range. 24 millimeters at the wide end is, is quite wide. You saw in our rollerblade video with the ZV-1, 24 is totally wide enough to vlog on. And it's also the industry standard for establishing shots. Those, those nice wide shots that show you where we are in the story, where the story is taking place. The standard for that is 24 millimeters. Yeah, just in general, 24 millimeters is an amazing focal length to have in your bag. But with this lens, it's, it's so much more because with a little twist, Boom, now I'm at 35 millimeters. A great focal length for street photography, for capturing kind of the realness of life. And just in general, one of my favorite focal lengths to shoot at, I did that whole 35 with my 35 because I, I love 35 millimeter. If I'm just shooting everyday life, things that we're doing, I love the look of a 35 millimeter lens. But then I twist again and boom, now I'm at 50 millimeters. And 50 millimeters is my favorite for engagement sessions, for weddings, for family portraits. 50 millimeter is amazing. And then one more turn and, and I'm at 70. Not all the way to 85 where I like to take portraits, but it's still a decent focal length with low depth of field and, and pretty good bokeh. Now again, is a 24 millimeter prime lens better at 24 than the 24 to 70 is at 24? Absolutely, it's sharper, crisper, and it can usually go down to something like f1.4. Whereas again, this only goes down to 2.8. And the same is true at 35 millimeters and 50 millimeters. Those prime lenses are better at those focal lengths than this is at each of those focal lengths, but I need three lenses for that and I have one lens here that can do a pretty decent job of all three of those focal lengths. And because this lens is so versatile in your work, whatever it is, photography or cinematography, this is an incredible workhorse lens to have in your bag. Especially if you're doing a lot of run and gun stuff, you don't know exactly what to expect. Having the ability to go from 24 and then go whoop into 70 is is really good to get the shot. And that's why if I could only have one lens for the rest of my life, it, it would be the 24 to 70. I would be sad about it. I'd be sad that I couldn't have my other lenses, but but I would be happy knowing that I'm still probably gonna get the shot with this lens. Again, let me know if you guys wanna see kind of a, a roadmap of, of the order of operations that I think most people should buy lenses in. And I'll make that video uh, later. For now though, 24 to 70, best lens if you only have one. 
While widely discredited for its shortcomings, it's kind of amazing. Quick Tip Tuesday, hit that like button, comment below. Maybe you uh, think about subscribing to the channel. Maybe you you just be awesome, super awesome. You're the most awesome that there is and you go buy a t-shirt at the first link in the description. I think it's a really good idea. All right, see you later. Yeah.